the eggs and this is what they look like. He's got a nice little hiding spot. When you put the flashlight on him, it's so easy to see him, even with my old eyes. Thousands of or hundreds of rotifers right there. Here are our eggs. It's been about, um, darn it, it's been two days since I pulled it out and I really thought they were gonna hatch pretty quickly. I guess I should look up more information on this stuff. <laughs> what I've learned is that when these eggs turn white like this, that the there's a fungi or bacteria that has pretty much set in and attacked the eggs and they are no longer viable. So sorry to say this batch did not make it, but not to worry because my clowns are busy laying more eggs. This time they presented another challenge because they laid them right on the live rock next to the NEM. <laughs> Go figure. All right, so this is the third day after I noticed the eggs and this is what they look like. So it's the third day, but it's two days, 48 hours. <laughs> Am I getting that right? So those are eggs after two days. Daddy's taking care of them. Fanning them and removing the mold and whatever accumulates on them that I failed to understand. First time around, so that's where I would like to place a tile right there. I did not realize this was one big giant rock. So no Nem hiding in here. What's down there? Is that a clam? There's something hiding up inside. Oh, that's my emerald crab. Look at that. <laughs> Do you see the emerald crab in there? He's got a nice little hiding spot. All right, I'm just gonna put you back hiding Hiding under here, just a slightly different location. Oh, my rock fell. My GSP rock. See, this is what happens when you just kind of pile rocks on top of each other. They move around, and I also have that huge um, snail that's hiding in here somewhere. And when I first put him in, he really went to town on my... Oh, I forgot about this light that I have in here too. Look at that. <laughs> I don't even know if it works anymore. I'm not going to plug it in. It's my blue light. Wow, everything just kind of attached itself to this rock. Yeah, no nem. Wow. That is crazy. Alright, I'm gonna put this style four like right there. Oh there. My style of four came dislodged. That's what I wanted. I wanted that dislodged, ooh, fragging, put there on, oh no, <laughs> the GSP ate it, all right, here we go, we'll put this back in the corner so we can have some nice viewing, and I can clean up some of this wall, so the way we do this, am I on there? is I'm just gonna do by hand because that is really tough stuff. Okay, I have a NEM that is lost. Or, is it possible that anemone 
came loose and just got sucked up into the into the pump without me realizing it. I mean, wouldn't I see all that stuff all over the tank at some point? That was so strange. It just happened overnight like that where it just disappeared. Get it? That is just the darndest thing, isn't it? Unbelievable. Well, time to clean up my little mess here. Water everywhere. One thing that I have to do before I can put them in my little culture bucket is to match the salinity. Apparently, rotifers are very sensitive to salinity, and you don't want to. He's got these ones sitting at about 1.0 to 1. My tank is about 1.026. So he said, go ahead and mix a batch that um, is the same salinity. So that's what I'm doing here. So that's where I'm at. Got the little bubbler action going here. You can see that with my little travel bubbler. <laughs> I can uh, run this right off of the, the little outlet in the car. Pretty cool. So this is what I have so far. I've gone ahead and <clears throat> I've gone ahead and put about a cup of what was in this gallon into the main container because I just want to see if it's gonna if they're gonna last. And I went ahead and fed them. Put a little bit of um, that micro micro algae in there, and we'll see how it goes. The temperature acclimated pretty well. The salinity is identical. So hopefully they'll, they'll come out. All right, so I've had this running overnight and I did add some algae paste in there yesterday. I'm gonna add some more now. Let me pull this out so we can take a look here. I don't know if this is gonna show up very well. I've got a flashlight here to the side. You can see the rotifers are really thriving when you put the flashlight on them. It's so easy to see them, even with my old eyes. I can see them. They're doing pretty good. The water is, a, is definitely not as green as it was when I put it in yesterday. Um, I only took this amount of water out, so that means that's how many rotifers I put in the bucket. Highly concentrated algae paste. Um, can see there it's really highly concentrated all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them that much I'm gonna take this fork put it in there um, I put a little bit more than that yesterday I, I want you to see how it mixes the color that it gets put it on the, the little filter pad there um, and that's all I put in there yesterday and it turns pretty darn green let me pull this out and then you can see how green it turns when I add it. Let's do it. another little fork. We'll add it in there. And then we should see in another 12 hours that it's not that green anymore. And the reason that that is is because supposedly the rotifers are eating it. This is how I do a water change in my little rotifer village. Oops. I moved the bucket over here and I accidentally let this slip in. The water is super clean right now is because it's been about six hours since I fed them. Um, how do I know they're in there? How do I know they're even alive? Well, this is how we're going to find out. I'll show you. So here's my sieve. So all I do is I reach in here because you can't really um, pull water out of here without pulling rotifers out of here. It's kind of difficult to do water change and it's difficult to have a filter going. Uh, so the easiest way is we have our bubbler. This little fleece um, captures any of the nasty stuff that's going on in the tank and if you leave it in there, that's pretty much all the filter you need. So all we have to do is harvest. So what I do to harvest is I'm just going to scoop out buckets 
full of rotifers, and which you have to harvest rotifers daily anyway. You have to harvest, <laughs> I don't know, 10%, 20%. It just kind of depends on how fast your rotifers are growing, which depends on salinity and temperature and all those things. Um, how good your water is, blah, blah, blah. So we'll scoop it out. We'll scoop it out. But well, first of all, let's show you the rotifers. Scoop out a little container and put it up. You can see, hopefully that's focusing in. Let me put my shirt in the background. And you can see all those thousands of or hundreds of rotifers right there. Everything that you see floating in there, them be rotifers swimming around. All right, so let's back up. Let's put those back in. And we do water change at the same time we harvest the rotifers. So I'm going to do like a couple of buckets. I've got my clean salt water off to the side. And wah, normally I do this in another room. I have my sieve here. This is a 50 micron sieve. And let's see. I think you can see them in there. Let's see if the camera's going to focus. Let me get behind the the camera you can see them on the bottom there then be rotifers all the golden goodness they're not as golden colored as brine shrimp eggs or brine shrimp but they are pretty golden and you know if you drop water if you waste a little bit it's not the end of the world and the reason I do in a sieve you could if you wanted to scoop it up and then just dump it in the tank and that'd be fine but the salinity is lower in here there's other contaminants in there you know other junk floating around it's not that clean and then i'll just take the sieve and i'll put it next to the the little pump back here and let the water flow through it now the rotifers are all in the tank if you watch the fish You'll see some of them are noticing the rotifers and some of them are going after the rotifers. You see the little guys, they spot the rotifers pretty quickly. The clowns, oh, darn it. <laughs> I have to turn off my, my sponge filter. Oops, there we go. If I don't turn off the sponge filter, then all those rotifers are just getting siphoned and sucked out. So now how do we know we got all the rotifers. Well, we don't really. So what I'm going to do is we'll just grab some of this water. That way we know our sieve is working. It would help if I flip the camera lens around and I could actually see. So there we go. There's still some floaties in there and there might even be some baby rotifers. But you can see that most of the big dudes are gone. And if there's some baby rotifers in here, sorry, they are going to get tossed. So now all I have to do is grab clean water, the same two buckets. Or if you feel like you're running low on water, you can add more. You should keep track of the salinity. You want to keep track of the salinity in here because you don't want it climbing too high. I want to add a little bit more. What goes in there? Swirl it around, try and get it off the knife. And if you can do that two to three times a day, that should be enough. What you want to really keep an eye on is just now that I put that in there, it turned a certain color green, a tinted green. As soon as it's clear again, that's when they, want, that's when they need to be fed again. Um, so you can do it three, four times a day. Some people do it more often than that, but you don't really have to. 
That's it. Water change. I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger. And then it hit me. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>